Hello YouTube, it's Doss Gregor, and welcome to a Gen 2 discussion with your host, Doss, Doss Gregor. <laughs> you may be going, oh my goodness, what happened to his face? There's a big caterpillar up over his lip and all his hair fell out. <sighs> yeah, I had a birthday about a month ago or about three weeks ago or something like that. All my hair fell out. I got old. Next thing I'll know, my teeth will be falling out soon. <laughs> uh, I decided to take a little off the top, and for some reason, it just kind of took a little off a little bit more. <laughs> it's always so difficult for me to be able to see that double and triple chin. <laughs> it's one of the reasons why I put the beard out there so that you know I can't see it. It makes me not feel so bad. I have noticed, though, since I turned 40, that there's a lot more gray hair <laughs> than I'm used to seeing. But anyway, enough about me. Let's get on to Linux, hey? Yeah. Today's discussion I wanted to talk about was revisiting my EFI video that I did back in January. Now, I gave a lot of grief to EFI back then. And I'll still be honest about my feelings about EFI. I personally still think that it's a pain in the butt. Can't stand it. Don't know really why we had to do this. I'm of the old philosophy, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And there wasn't anything broken with Legacy BIOS. Now, I've had a lot of... And I mean, a lot of people come to me and say, well, you should be able to install without any issues and there shouldn't be any problem. And I don't understand why you're hitting all these roadblocks. Well, I'd like to just try to clarify a few things. And maybe some of those people who may have seen that and commented might watch this and, and say, oh, okay. <laughs> First off, one of the biggest comments I've gotten is the fact that Oh, well, you should still be able to disable Secure Boot and EFI and run Legacy. With this particular HP laptop, it doesn't give me the ability to turn off EFI or to make Legacy a priority over EFI. It automatically checks and sees if there is an EFI partition, and if it sees it, it gives preference to EFI over Legacy no matter what I throw at it. So if I have EFI Windows 8, for instance, everything has to be EFI or it won't even give it the time of day. Now you say, well, you're a Linux guy. What are you doing with Windows 8? <laughs> well, <clears throat> I'm not a snob about that. Windows 8 came with the system, and in my work, I do have to support Microsoft and, and, and troubleshooting. Well, shoot, if it weren't for all the fallacies in Microsoft's operating system, I wouldn't have a job, I suppose. Because <laughs> that's what I mostly do, is fix all their flaws and constantly try to repair everything that keeps breaking with Microsoft, with the company I work for. But uh, that being said, and getting back to this, yeah, you know, I like to keep Windows around for that rare occasion. And I do mean rare. I mean, I almost seldom ever go into the Windows side of this. This laptop, for instance, has two hard drive slots. And the first one, of course, one terabyte that it came with Windows 8. I left it on there. I've got it up. And every once in a blue moon, I might go in there to check out something. There's always going to be something that even as an, a, a Linux user, you're going to run into an issue where a driver might not work for hardware or you're having issues with a software package or something on the web just doesn't want to work right with how you have it in Linux. And you're going to ask yourself the question, is this a problem with the fact that I'm using Linux and a Linux browser or Linux environment that this isn't working? Or is it a problem with the hardware, the site, or whatever software you're trying to go to? 
And so it's really good to be able to boot back into the Windows environment, test it out, see if it fails, see if it works, and give yourself another option to see what might be the underlying problem or if you just have to use Windows for it. I, for instance, and I know I've talked about this, have a Logitech Harmony Remote that is software-based that you can configure it and program it and such. And that program, of course, is a Windows-based software package, even though I think really all it does is give you some sort of a program that interfaces with their web page, as far as I'm thinking how it works. But there's no way just to, I think, go on their web site, log in, and be able to do that. You actually have to use their software. It's Windows only. On rare occasion, I haven't had to program it in years. <laughs> Eh, just because I haven't got anything new for a while. <laughs> but, yeah, it's one of those things that does actually require Windows. One of the reasons why I haven't been able to move my wife over uh, to a Linux-only system is because she's got a couple pieces of hardware that only work in a Windows environment. You know, until we can get manufacturers to work with the open source community and help build drivers and applications that will work in more than just Windows or now as we see sometimes they'll actually say oh we're Apple too we'll let you work on that Mac of yours yeah there's a lot more out there than Mac and Windows let me tell you that you know and Linux is becoming an operating system that more and more people can use so that's why I keep around Windows, and that's a little bit of a long way around the story. But because of that, I'm forced to set up Gen 2 as an EFI-based OS because the BIOS just will not let me tell it to allow legacy BIOS to boot. Now, I could get rid of my Windows disk, and I could just put in another one, and I have tested this to see if it would work when people started telling me, oh, well, you, don't, you can bypass the EFI and go legacy boot. Well, yeah, you can do that only if you get rid of everything else. Because as soon as I take out the Windows 8, throw in an empty drive, I installed a, a, a known non-EFI Linux flavor just to try it out. Worked fine. Booted great. I even started building Gen 2 on another system or another hard drive with everything out legacy. And it works great. It runs. It's, it's, it's functional. But I still want to be able to have that that Windows ability just in case and you know I guess you could say well for as rare of times that you use it maybe you could just go ahead and take out the hard drive swap in the, the other one and then boot it that way yeah, it might not be so bad except for I know me I'll set that hard drive somewhere safe and it'll be so safe I can't find it when I need it it's safest inside the computer <laughs> no it's safer than the computer yeah, you know, I ran into a lot of problems when I was doing EFI. One of them was that I just really didn't know what drivers I needed to do. And now there are there were some tutorials, and and granted, you can remember this was almost a year ago when I was doing this, so eleven months or so. And you know, the biggest issue I ran into was the graphics drivers are different. Haswell uh, driver for EFI frame buffer versus say trying to make it work with a Intel frame buffer and I ran into all kinds of trouble where I boot into the OS and the console would just go blank on me and I wouldn't see anything until I could get the GUI interface running and then I would see stuff well I learned and troubleshot and figured it out and you know, there's a lot of little things you got to do with the kernel and Gen 2 to make it all work and I I configured that and got it working I had a lot of issues with the sound on here I had a few issues with the network. It seemed like everything took a little bit more tweaking and configuring with the kernel and the software to make it all work right. I had a lot of issues with the sound card, for instance, but I don't blame that on EFI. I believe that's because this thing has something called Beats Audio, and I'm sorry if you like Beats Audio. I can't stand it in a laptop. I just want my sound to work. I don't need to make it sound like I've got a, a, a five-speaker system. It's a freaking laptop. It's not a surround sound. You know, I had all kinds of problems with my sound, and 
luckily I was able to find a solution out there you know that's the big thing is finding the solutions to make it work now my sound works proper now my video works great you know my network doesn't have any issues or hiccups everything's fine it, it, it seems in fact you know I'll be honest with you this is the most stable and best I've had my Linux work in years now my other one was fine you know I, I had an older HP and I think most of my problems with that HP was that it had very bad situation with the wireless card it has this touch you know controls up at the top and it was an 18.4 inch screen so it was really long and the problem was that every once in a blue moon I'd go to shift or move around and bump the laptop on my lap because it's a laptop you know it's that's why it moves a little like right here you know <laughs> yeah, it's not a desktop and it would cause the wireless to shut off I'd lose my internet lose whatever network connectivity I had and I had and I had to I wrote scripts and things like that that all I did was hit a couple keys and it would shut it all down start it all back up and get it working again yeah so I, that was a headache I had to deal with and and I'm not sure how much of that I, I it probably caused me problems with that but like I said right now my gen 2 box runs really well and I don't think it's because I got it configured on EFI I've learned a lot with configuring some things of the kernel there are a lot of stuff about the kernel that I still don't know I, I really leave most of it alone I just mess with the hardware drivers that I need I mean the biggest thing is if you know what hardware you have and what you need disable the stuff that you don't use because it's gonna save you so much space on your on your kernel when it builds it or build it as a module and that's one thing I found out with the sound I always feel I always had this 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 thought process that if the hardware was built into the device build it into the kernel if it was a pluggable piece of hardware that plugged in you took it out and removed it etc build it as a module so that it would work well I found out with this particular system with the beats audio I had to program and build everything as a module and not build it in as kernel uh, features and when I did that I was finally able to fix all the issues that I had with my audio and make it work using some software that's out there another issue that I ran into was I actually don't have grub installed on this I don't have Lilo installed on this it's running off of a bootloader program called refined R E F I N D and refined sits on the Windows side of the house in the boot partition for EFI it auto detects any EFI OS that's on the system and finds the kernel for it and sets it up as a boot option on the menu dynamically at boot I didn't have to really configure too much and what's really cool about this is if I rebuild a kernel like right now if you look at my kernel package right up here it's 3.12.7 I have not updated that for a while and <clears throat> I know we're a lot higher up there, but this works great. You know, that's another thing to think about. You don't have to update for the sake of updating. Now, if you're having problems and you think a newer kernel is going to fix those problems, go for that. But right now, this one has been very stable, no issues. But if I did pull down another kernel, rebuild it, made sure it had EFI support and everything proper, Refined would automatically detect it on boot up and set it up as a menu option for me. I don't have to worry about configuring grub I don't have to figure about the Linux loader or anything else refine just takes care of it for me it still allows me to be able to get into Windows if I needed to and in this case right now on the sin system and I may have mentioned prior videos I've got Windows on one hard drive Gen 2 a Linux from scratch and a guest OS I kept Linux from scratch from the time when I built it just because it took a lot to build and I didn't want to just blow it away I might have to, I might one day want to come back to it and check it out and and see if I can make it even better and see if I can make it run uh, nicer maybe as it was a lot of fun to go through all that and get it running and it'd be even neater to be able to say hey look at what I did with Linux from scratch someday other than that really bad video I did with hey look I barely got it running and, and now it's super cool because you know it's just oh it looked terrible but it's still hey I, I was proud of myself 
There's a lot of people who tried Linux from scratch and have failed miserably. So I'm happy with that. <laughs> you know, it's it's the little things you got to think about, make you happy, keep you going. <laughs> Anyway, you know, refined, it finds everything perfect, it sees it, it runs it, and everything gets in there just fine. So if I want to play with another uh, Linux kernel, I can build it, it sees it, adds it to the menu, etc. You know, the other stuff I ran into with EFI, I've been able to overcome everything. Right now, like I said, Gen 2 is perfect for me. It's the best it's ever been. I still update on a weekly to bi-weekly, you know, about every, really two to three weeks probably, <laughs> weekly, yeah. yeah, I'm not very good at weekly, um, but updating the system and making sure things are proper, and, and for the most part, everything has been stable, everything's been wonderful with this system, I really like Gen 2 on it, and I really haven't found too many other Linux distros that I feel comfortable with using this in the environment that I have it set up. So anyway, this is already getting on to 16 minutes, and I've been rambling way too long for you guys. So ah, anyway, <laughs> I just wanted to talk about the things about EFI, try to answer a few questions about why people said why about legacy booting and why I give it so much grief. Yeah, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I still don't like EFI, but it works, and you can do it. And it's a lot simpler than I probably made it out to be back in January. But you have to think about the fact that that was my very first experience ever dealing with it. And I was frustrated that it just wasn't working the way I thought it ought to have worked. It shouldn't have been that difficult. And in the future, as we go forward, more and more Linux distributions are going to build themselves so that they work fine in an EFI environment. It's one of those things where I just don't think that at the time when I was doing this, there was that much documentation out there or enough information. And as I have found out over the last couple of months, every hardware is just a little bit different. I was talking with our good friend Caddy the other night on one of my RC channels, and he was stating and asking me about my EFI experience. And he was saying how his computer, he can make legacy boot be the priority over EFI and I was thinking man I envy you because if I could do that that would make things so much more simple for being able to build operating systems using legacy or EFI depending on how you wanted to do it instead of me being forced into the EFI environment because of the way the HP EFI BIOS has been set now like I said I could get rid of the Windows 8 disk and go that route and be able to put you know the the system but it would be nice to be able to have EFI and legacy side by side and have them work on the system or choose one from the other but that's not the way that they, the, the that the fine fellows at HP have decided on this particular laptop to make it now when this one wears out I will do a little bit more research because I didn't even know that's something I needed to research and I will make sure that my next laptop in the next five or six years or how long it takes this one to get outdated has the ability to put legacy over EFI but then again by then who knows EFI will probably be the standard and legacy will not even be an option by the time that happens yes only time will tell <laughs> Thank you all for watching. I hope I didn't ramble too much on you. If it's morning, evening, noon, or night, whatever you're having, have a good one. I hope I didn't scare you too much with the facial, lack of facial hair. <laughs> May try this out for a little bit. I just needed a change. I just wasn't so used to seeing all this. Maybe it'll make me uh, feel like I need to lose some weight and actually get myself eaten better. Who knows? Probably not, but who knows. <laughs> Thank you again. Goodbye, guys.